right at three years ago, 2019 as a matter of fact, I bought this 2006 Moomba Mobius XLV. Hey buddy. And we were gonna try our hand at like having a surf boat or V-Drive. And that's a 23 foot boat. And that thing was honestly awesome. I bought it used, the guy had done a cool wrap, the interior was like perfect. It was sort of our prove out that we liked that style boat. And we very much did. And with the market going crazy like it is, I sold it a couple of weeks ago for $8,000 more than I paid for it. And we probably put 150 hours on it out on the lake. So then, we bought this 2022 Moomba Makai, which is their largest boat in their fleet this generation. But the purpose of this video is not to convince you to spend six figures on a boat. It's to show you a little bit about this Makai and show you a couple of modifications that you're really gonna need to do to it. First thing I had to do was cut a hole in the back of my shop so this thing could hang out. I think you need 27 feet of length to store this thing somewhere and about 11 foot of height with the tower up. Guess before we go much further, because it'll probably come up, the colors on this boat are a black hull, intense green on the sides and interior, and then a charcoal metallic on the main panel along the sides. Absolutely beautiful in the sun, or any light for that matter. So I took a night delivery on this boat because I was out of town and came in, and the boat dealer, 918 Boats, link in the description, was nice enough to have it in the water, even at 6.30 at night when I arrived, to take us out and spend as much time as we needed to understand the boat and how it worked and those kind of things. It's super helpful. I've had boats my whole life, but I haven't had this boat my whole life. This boat's equipped with the audio upgrade. It has the Sin Series Wet Sounds amp and has like six in-boat speakers and the two 10-inch wet sounds on the tower and then a seal or a ported enclosure is how they're doing it now in the Moombas. Uh, with a 10 inch wet sound sub and it really sounds awesome to be quite honest with you for a factory setup but one of the problems that i ran into is the stereo was on the key switch so it had to be in run or accessory to send power to the audio system and honestly that's not going to work because if you're sitting there with it on accessory listening to the radio and then you're ready to take off when you crank the engine, it kills power to the radio, which I understand is a amperage draw thing that the factory needs to do, but we're not drawing that many amps. So your phone has to reconnect and there's like this long delay and sort of kills the party, if you will. What I did was pull the 12 volt power from the back of this fusion unit from inside and wired it to this accessory switch. Now, originally this accessory switch would be hooked, if you have the option of the RGB LED lights, that's what's gonna be there, so you won't be able to use it. There's another accessory switch here that has like on when it's up and on when it's down, but if your boat's equipped with the factory heater, that's where that switch is gonna be used, so you may have to come up with your own version or just physically wire your radio directly to battery power and just have to physically turn it off. Or, since these have these convenient battery switches now, when the battery switch is turned off, it'll kill power to the radio. Otherwise, it'll be powered all day long. The other thing that I had to fix right away was the light wiring. Now, the Makai comes standard with this really cool under tower LED strip. It's super bright at night. You can see it's on here. It comes on the same time as all the blue LEDs inside the boat above the speakers and it looks amazing at night as well as these little um, galley lights or whatever they're called. The problem is from the factory anytime those really nice ambient LED lights are on so is this super bright dome light. So I took mine down cut into one side of the wire because there's two wires and put this switch in. So now I can just reach up and turn this on separately from the LEDs in the boat. Number three, now on our XLV, believe it or not, from the factory, it had a floor cooler. You could just reach from the driver's seat and open up like a trap door in the bottom of the boat. And there was enough room in there to hold like 48 bottled waters and a bag of ice. This boat doesn't have that, but it has tons of space. And I don't like having any clutter or coolers, even though we've got plenty of room for that kind of thing. It has this door in the floor. That's a Makai only feature. 
And what they've done is they've made like this little tray so you could put shoes, which regular shoes won't fit, but flip-flops will. And they've put a trash can, which is a super neat feature to be honest with you. However, I don't have a floor cooler. So if I remove this, take this tray out, of course you can see that's access to the batteries, which is a really nice location. Just get on Amazon, order one of these, I'm sure there's plenty of others you can choose from. You have like 36 inches worth of um, length that these can be. But I liked this one because where the measurements were, it drops right in place here. It has this quick access so you don't have to open up the entire zippered section. Makes it kind of nice. If you need to get a drink, just reach in, open that, get what you need, close again. It'll stay cool as well being under the floor like that and just kind of surrounded by that insulated air instead of being out in the sun cooking all day long if you just can't stand the thought of not having that trash can go to this cushion put it right here there you go number four and this is extremely important if you're surfing behind this boat which what are you buying it for if you're not surfing behind it but because it's so large and so buoyant, even with 4,000 pounds of factory ballast, it doesn't sink this boat enough to give you a good strong wave. Now, it has plenty of ballast up front, and we usually run those at like 65%, which is recommended by the dealer. But if you have a lot more people in the boat, that all can change, I recognize that. But these factory bags in the back, there's actually two on each side. So they come with this nice deep tray that you can store stuff in, life jackets, rope, etc. And underneath that is a 1,000 pound bag. And then I think it has a 400 pound bag that it's hooked to that subfloor inside the boat, which is really cool and I love having that. But I'm gonna tell you, that's not enough. So you call up these guys or get on their website, I recommend as much faster, and they make this factory ballast upgrade. Now this is wakemakers.com. These will add 700 pounds to the rear of the boat. You don't have to deal with lead shot or steel shot bags or any of that stuff people seem to be wanting to use these days. This is a plug and play option. Runs off the factory switch. It's empty when you're done, so you're not carrying an extra weight on your trailer and towing it with your boat and all that nastiness. I wanna say these are like 650 bucks delivered to your house. And that's way cheaper than 700 pounds worth of steel shot. And these ballast bags don't require any tools to change them out. Get this rope out of our way. Because we're going to need to remove the tray first. But you can't remove the tray without the cushion being open a little further. So you can just pull these end caps out. You don't even need, again, you don't need tools to do it. Or at least pull them a little ways out. And then they'll come right off. Make sure don't lose them. Probably a good idea to go ahead and clip these back in place so it doesn't fall on your head. It's a long ways down to the bottom of that. That thing's almost three, maybe a little over three foot deep um, to the deck, to the bottom there. Now against the rear panel, you're gonna have three of these hoses to disconnect. That's kind of your overflow vent and then you've got your fill and drains. And these are super easy. You just basically slide this red collar forward. And once the column is all the way forward, you'll be able to tell. And then you can just sort of wiggle the whole hose. And it'll come right off of there. There is a couple of O-rings here. And if yours is older, you should probably get some lube tube or some other product that you can lubricate those and it'll help preserve them and keep it from leaking in the future. So you gotta pop this one two more in the back and then there's two in the front that essentially connect to this ballast bag that's subfloor. Here's a pro tip. Make sure you pull the center drain out of your boat before you do this because they really do not drain the water out of these bags that much. So 
make sure it has a place to go. And it kind of slowly drains out of this cavity and into the hole. So probably don't get in a hurry. Let that dry out a little bit before you set a bag on top of it because it'll just mildew eventually. Unfortunately, with these new Smarty Pants boats, it's not just as easy as changing the bags and maybe adjusting the timers or just turning your pumps off manually once you see the overflow vent spraying water. They've got overflow vent sensors in these lockers. And that is what is inside right here that's connected to that vent tube. Here's the other side. I've taken off this rear panel, just a couple of screws at the top and a couple at the bottom. As you can see where that overflow hooks to the bag and the water will go up this tube past this sensor and then go out this side of the hole through that fitting. Now what'll happen is if you get air in the top of your bag it's going to force water up that overflow tube a little prematurely and the system's going to turn off your pumps because it thinks it's full. Now, the good thing about the weight makers bags versus the factory bags is they have these sort of built-in dry lock vents. So the hope is they'll let the air out and not let water out and it'll prevent that premature shutdown for these. Now we still have to keep in mind that they're going to shut off when the water level reaches where that sensor is in the bag, which is still considerably higher than where the factory bags would have caused it to shut off. I have one more sensor in these and that's that guy right there. And it's fastened to the front of this engine compartment and it's basically hooked to this through hole fitting right here. It just goes out through the bottom of the boat. So it comes to this 90 and then goes up this tube. And that is the basic, this basically is a sensor to tell how deep the rear of the boat is in the water. But the thought is we're probably going to need to raise that one up a little bit, which won't be that big of a deal. And we may need to extend those vents somewhere in the middle so that sensor is higher. Otherwise, it won't do us any good to have a bag that comes up um, to just below these covers if the system shuts the pumps off before it reaches that. Before you just start installing these bags willy-nilly, you're going to want to look at the part number on the package because that's the only way to know for sure which one you're working with. Now it doesn't sh say port or starboard, but if you look at the packing slip, it'll list that the 497 is for the port side and the 498 is the starboard side bag. You may be able to tell if you look closely, for instance, this is the forward facing section of the bag that goes and hooks up to the bag subfloor. These are offset to the left. And when you look down in the cavity, you'll notice the connections they make are actually offset to the left and has more space for the bag to be on this side of those connections. I still can't get over how much room there is in these boats. It's important when you make these connections down here that you slide this clip until you hear that last really loud snap. And then you know for sure that it's latched on nice and tight. It's more difficult than you might think to find out later because as the bag starts to expand, you won't see those fittings if they're leaking or not. Now that these guys are in, it's time to go to the lake and see how we did. I only have this short amount of footage the day I found out that the wave's pretty soft on this boat with stock ballast. I never felt comfortable throwing the rope in even though I was enjoying the first day on the boat because if you lost that wave, you were out. This is an image of the ballast completely filled. We did have to toggle the fill switches a few times to turn the pumps on again and vent the top of the bag a couple of times to get rid of air. But once we did, the wave was tall and plenty long and had lots of push. I felt comfortable recovering from way back in the pocket.